Hi everybody, I'm Nettie Kay. Welcome back to my studio. Today I have a special project that I want to share with you. Uh, we're going to be painting a beautiful little corgi dog. Actually, it's a corgi chihuahua mix. This is a really fun one. Uh, from one of my viewers, her name's Christy. Hi Christy. Uh, and she put in a request. She said, uh, I want to buy a portrait and have you paint it. And then is there any chance that you could film the process on YouTube? Uh, so that I can learn how to do it. And so it got me thinking. And so what I did was I went ahead and did a sketch ahead of time. Now normally I don't have to do that because I've been doing it for a long time. I just paint the painting and I don't bother with a big, you know, full detail sketch. But here's the thing. I've decided that I'm going to create a little kit for uh, the next five people that order a portrait of their pet uh, to where I put a, um, a photo of the pet in the box and then here's the box here's the box right here and inside the box will be a finished painting this isn't a finished painting um, so there'll be two there'll be one finished painting and then one uh, tonal rendering in black and white so that uh, you can practice painting your pet too okay and so there'll be uh, a couple of brushes and also some tubes of paint, as well as I might film another one uh, of maybe of your pet uh, in upcoming episodes. Okay, so let me know if that's something that you might be interested in. You'll find it on my Etsy site at nettykstudio.etsy.com under Pet Portrait Kits. Okay, that's gonna be fun. Hey, let's get going on this, yeah. All right, one of the main problems that you may be having in getting your pet portraits to look uh, professional uh, is that you may be using the wrong medium. Some of us are, are watercolorists, some of us like to paint in acrylic, and some in oil. If I paint a pet portrait in acrylic, everybody, uh, and I'm going to try that here uh, in the next episode, we're going to do this one in oil first and then acrylic later, and I'm going to show you the difference. But if I paint it in acrylic, uh, usually I cannot get as um, nice a, a, an outcome as when I paint it in oil. And so uh, I don't want you to be afraid of oil if you haven't tried it. Uh, and you may find that you paint better in acrylic. You know, you just don't know. But I think I'd like to do this little experiment and see what the difference is, okay? And I'll tell you as we go along uh, what, what is different about each medium. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Okay. Now, what I have done here, you guys, is I have put a, um, a tonal rendering in pencil, and then I sprayed it with some aerosol hairspray. So it's not going anywhere. Okay. So it doesn't matter what I put on there in an oil paint. Uh, I can wipe it off and still find that drawing underneath. Would you like to see how that works? Yeah. All right. Here, let's go. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my brush in some thinner and I'm going to give it a nice slick coat of thinner onto my little panel that I've got. And I'm going to now decide what I want to put on here. And I'm going to go with a dark tone. And so I think this time we're going to take this into um, some raw umber, okay? So raw umber. I'm going to take some raw umber and I'm going to do something really scary. I'm going to cover this in raw umber like this. And you can you can use, you know, all kinds of different colors. You could use dark purple, you could do all kinds of different things, but I'm going to choose a raw umber. It's kind of classic color. And uh, and then I'm going to take my my little um, Viva paper towel or a rag that doesn't leave any lint and I'm going to rub that into the panel. And then you can see as I go, uh, you can begin to see the drawing is still under here. I'm going to take this down in case I wreck this. Okay, that wouldn't be good. And we're going to now uh, rub this in like this. You might want to wear some rubber gloves or plastic gloves or something so that you can protect your hands. But I'm going to put this on. Now if you did this in acrylic, the problem is you don't have the transparency or the translucency of the paint and you'll end up covering your drawing and you won't have it anymore. Oh dear, that wouldn't be too swift. So 
Now I've got this kind of a thing going on like this so that you can sort of see the drawing underneath. Now I'm going to go back in, grab my photograph, and I'm going to take a little corner of my clean towel and I'm going to remove uh, the areas where there is light. So initially I've got this, this pretty accurate drawing. That always helps. So practice your drawings, you guys. And if you can't do the drawing very well, you know, transfer it on. That's okay. Uh, when you're first beginning, transferring is fine. Just, you know, go in and, and uh, put a little bit of uh, uh, graphite on the back of your, um, your, your photo. You know, make sure it's nice and thin. And then you can transfer any marks that you need. Now I'm finding I've got a nice light part right here. The, the light's hitting over on this side of the dog. And it just begins to lift up the, uh, and reveal the canvas underneath. Now this is a white, it's not a canvas, it's a panel. I'm going to say that about five times, I know, because I normally work on, on canvas. But uh, I've been switching to panel because I just think it gets a, a much better result for me, okay, than on canvas. I can get uh, much better detail, and I love the way the paint looks on these wonderful panels. So I've been trying to get my the people that buy my work to move into the realm of panels because it's just better I, for me. I just think the paints, paints look so much nicer. So now you can see I'm, I've got into here. Now I can get, um, get even more detailed. Uh, I can go in with a, another little spot, dip it into my, my thinner, and I can bring it up even lighter. Let's see how light I can get this. There, see it's even lighter in the lights, and so I don't want to lose all, all those wonderful middle tones, but anywhere where the light hits. And you know, I almost, with just this alone, you know, I could hang that on the wall and be happy. I could, and I think you could too. So this is something that you can, you can try at home. So now these panels I have are, are um, primed with gesso. So I have a, a white uh, layer of gesso or possibly even yellow or maybe gray. I'll probably do a lot of these in, in um, maybe either uh, a light gray middle tone and then you'll be able to see when you hit it with white. So we'll try a couple of different colors uh, that might be best. So now, okay, now here's this dark side of the dog, okay, over here. Well, in the photo, it's just dark in the background. That's okay. I can make it dark in the background. Or I can come up behind it and pull out the, dar the, the light behind the dark side of the dog. And that gives it a feeling of Rembrandt lighting. Ooh, that sounds fancy. Yeah, that just means it's light on one side and dark on the other. So I've got a dark background that sets off the light and a light background that sets off the dark side of the dog. Oh my gosh, isn't that easy to get such a wonderful, wonderful result. So I'm very, very happy with that. And then if I want to kind of, I want to make sure it doesn't look like it's a, you know, just kind of striped. So I'm going to blend that out a little bit with my cloth. And uh, I might put in just a little bit more of that dark right here. It's a little bit runny, I got to be careful. I might put a little bit, because I want to set that ear off a little bit more. So now I'm going to go back in and put in a little bit more dark around the area that I want to hit uh, the, the light to come out even more. So I'm putting that in. You can see how that just makes it look as though it's standing out beautifully. I want that corner a little bit darker, but I want this light down here to set off the dark side of the dog, right, like that. All right. That gives you a little idea. Now I can push push this around with a cloth. I can go back in and play with that for quite a while. In fact, I have been known to play with that the next day and it's still, you know, malleable. I can still make more. <clears throat> I can still mess with that even a day later. And I'm gonna keep the edges nice and soft because it's not a paper doll dog, is it? No, it is a, um, it's a round and fuzzy animal. Yeah. 
So, uh, the another one of my big tools, you guys, are uh, little tools, important tools, Q-tips, okay? Little, you know, earbuds, okay? And you can come in and take, uh, you know, get more detail with these little little earbuds like this. You just dip them into your thinner and you can get a lot of detail. So now I want to uh, maybe make a little highlight on top of the nose. Look at that, there it is. And then I want to maybe take a highlight out of the eye right there as it goes through and shines through the other side. There that is right like that. Okay, so any details that I want to just play around with, I can get those with these with the Q-tips, just like that. Okay, now I've got a little bit of a light underneath the chin right here that sets off the shape of the chin, so I'm gonna make sure I don't lose that. It's a little white there, a little bit there. You can go through a lot of Q-tips too, and then I wanna come around the edge of this so that it doesn't look too edgy, and kinda do this kind of a thing, just back and forth a little bit like that. Okay, so that's, my, the way I start this. Isn't that fun? Yeah. All right, so now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to come in with a little bit of um, a smaller brush and I'm gonna come in with a little bit of black just so that you can enjoy this. And I'm gonna decide that light's coming from over here and so I wanna put in a little, eh, that's a little drippy, just a second. I'm realizing I had too much Okay, let's not put any thinner in there. Okay, so I'm gonna now take um, some straight black and without any thinner on it, everyone, and I'm going to create a little kind of backwards letter C where I'm leaving a spot or a little wedge cut out of the eye. And uh, hopefully we can get in here close enough so you can see what I'm talking about. And then on the other side, don't just finish one eye and then go over to the other because something will happen and one eye will look weird and different. So now I'm gonna come up around the eye like this, just a little bit like that. And there's a shadow that's cast uh, on the eye uh, from the lid, from the upper lid that casts down onto the eyeball itself. And so um, be aware of that. Now I'm going to dip into a little bit of a lighter color just so that you can see, I'm gonna go into some orange and then uh, this is a transparent orange. And I still have some black on my brush. I haven't rinsed it out. But you can see now, there I'm gonna go around the outside of the eye like that. And I'm gonna make it dark on the top part of the color. Really, really dark on the top part of the iris, like that. And then I'll just make a little, very careful little line that kind of goes around the eye like this. And I'm leaving some luminosity. Even if you don't see it in the photo, I still put it in because it looks so good. Yeah. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow ochre. That's a light tan color. And I'll put that on the side opposite to the highlight so that it looks like light is coming through on that side. I might not leave it quite so light because these are dark, dark eyes. So I gotta be a little bit careful. I'll make it a little bit darker. And you can see I've kind of messed up my pupil. Oh well, I can go right back in and put it right back in. All right, so here I'm gonna go put this back in again and correct it. And then put a little bit of a line around the outside again. I can do this quite a bit and quite a few times, but doesn't that just instantly bring the dog to life? Yes. Okay, now the next thing is I'm gonna take some dark brown. This is raw umber, and I'm going to take a little bit, first off, a little bit of black, and we're gonna do our nose, which has got an arrow. It's a line down the middle and an arrow like this, okay? An arrow as the bottom of the nose, and then and you've probably seen me do this a hundred times, but we're gonna come around here with the number six, fill that in, backwards number six, I just say the letter J, and make the nostril that kind of hooks in like that. This one has a little bit of a uh, dark around the outside like that. 
So, okay, the arrow at the bottom, the number six for the first nostril, the letter J with the second nostril, and you've got it right there. And then here's a little indication of the mouth underneath. Now, remember, the mouth is not, generally, is not too far down from the bottom of the arrow. It's just a tiny little space right there. And here's the other part of the chin kind of coming out like this. Then I'll put in just a tiny bit of a dark mark here. Just very, very careful. Don't get too carried away. And we'll go into some other, other little colors here. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of, see what my color, I have a little bit of a red color. This is called carmine. And uh, I'm going to add some carmine to um, a bit of brown, a bit of, uh, of the raw umber, and a little bit of white, and so that it becomes a little bit pink, but not too pink. Okay, a little pink on the top of the nose. So it's a little carmine, a little bit of raw umber, and maybe a tiny bit of white on the top part of the nose. And then I'm going to go back into the raw umber for the, for the part at the bottom, all right? so that it's a little bit darker uh, as it goes away from the light. Because the top part of the nose is, you know, part of the, the light that, that you can see. And I think I'll put a little bit of that same color right here. And uh, just like that. Okay, just like that. And then this is a nice, um, a nice color for inside this dark part of the ear. So, it's carmine um, or a red, you guys, whatever you have. A red with a brown into the dark part of the ear as it goes into shadow, just like that. And then we have, uh, let's see, where else can I put that? I think I'll just put this down here like this. You can go into lavenders, um, and uh, this is just the color that I happen to have on my brush right now. And I'm going to find a few bits of shadow this is a dark area down here. This brush is not the appropriate brush for um, for what I'm trying to do. I probably should have a, a bigger brush now. And so let's find, there we go. So we have it like that. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, a little filbert. Oh, that's actually a bright, doesn't matter. Um, and I'm going to take some of the carmine and with the brown, and then I'm gonna add some white to it. And then I'm going to come up here like this. That's too pink, so I'm going to add a little bit of orange. So it's going to be orange with pink. Orange with pink. There we go. That's a little bit better. And we'll just use a little bit of medium. Now my medium just makes the paint move a little better. You can use thinner. You can use, uh, uh, you know, Liquin, you can use Neo Megilp, you can use anything that helps your paint to move along. Uh, don't use water because we're not painting in acrylic right now. We're painting in oil at this point. I'm going to add a little bit more red into it so it just creates a nice glow. There we go. And then it gets a little bit darker over here. So I'm going to drag some of that dark that I've got on my, my uh, surface into this area right here and just begin to create that three-dimensional look. And so this is kind of a, I'm gonna use this paint on my brush and do the same thing over here. I've got pinks and oranges on my brush right now. And we'll kind of work it up like that. See how fast this goes, you guys, it's super fast. And then I'm gonna add some really, really light, light, light lavender onto my it's, it's mostly white, but uh, just a little bit of, maybe a little bit of lavender on there. Yeah. Or just some light, light yellow or light lavender, depends on what you're, what you want. And we'll create it like this. Okay, now I'll do the same thing over here. You can see I'm doing both ears at the same time. Uh, I'm going back and forth a little bit. Because I'm using the same colors, I don't want to have to try to remember what I had on my brush. I want to be able to use what I've got just like that. Okay. Maybe that's a good start on this one. Then I'm going to pull this 
down into the ear just a little bit. Just like that. Okay, now the next thing I'll do is I'm going to take some uh, yellow ochre with some white. Yellow ochre and white, and we're going to come up into the, uh, let's, let's make sure that that's the proper value right here. We've got a little bit there, and I want to come across like this. Got a little fuzz on the end of my brush. Got to get that out of there. A little more medium, and uh, I want to put, um, now I feel like I need to put a little bit of lavender in with the yellow ochre. It just feels too yellow, so I'll put that in. Yes, that's much better. So I've got a little bit of lavender with yellow ochre and white, and I'm putting in that nice light value around. It's not totally white. It's yellow ochre with a little lavender, so it's muted down. Now, what is uh, the complement to yellow is violet, so uh, when you want to mute something down, you take the complement or the opposite and you put that on there. So here's Here's our little color. Let's get that going. I want to make sure I have enough paint on my brush. And I'm just kind of filling this in. Now, of course, you take your time. I'm going to be taking my time as I finish this up. But I wanted to um, show you a little bit of the process like this. Okay, now a little bit more of that combination lavender with lavender with white and a little bit of yellow. And here's the little eye part right like that. Oops, got something else in there. And now I'm going to go in with some of the yellow ochre again. And this time I'm going to add a little bit of orange to it. Okay, so yellow ochre and orange. Or you can use raw sienna. That's good too. And we'll put in a little bit of that nice hot color just like this. Like that. And back up here. And so let's see what else do I need here. A little bit up in here. A little bit. Now I'm going to add a little bit of dark brown to that combination so that I have a, a darker value down here like this. And I'll bring it up in like that. Okay. Now I think I'm going to switch brushes. Oops. I'm going to switch brushes. And I want to put, I'm going to use this big brush that we used before. I'm going to go ahead and put in some of our, um, our darker value color, which is the um, transparent orange, a little bit of brown. And uh, I'm going to take this over here into the dark side. And I'm going to pull that with this big brush. Actually, I actually want to push it back into the background just a little bit. You can get lots of hair. Uh, effects with a larger brush like this. This is just a basic hardware brush. And so I'm going to find where all the darks are. And I'm going to darken that up just like that. And put that in like this with just this large brush. Not being too careful because it's fur. You want it to look like fur. And uh, I'm going to pull just a little bit there. Okay, that's good. And then let's see what I want to do. Okay, so I've got the dark side of the dog here, and then it, it might go up into the fur just like this. And I'm going to come back in. We'll come back in with uh, this is a funny thing to do, but I'm going to uh, use a little bit of teal, a little tiny drop of teal, or you can draw, use a tiny drop of blue with some white. And I'm going to come up here like this and use that into the lightest part of the of the the, uh, the muzzle where I see the lightest light I'm putting teal mostly white but a little bit of teal and you can really see how that pops out just like that anything else that needs to pop out I can use a, a fan brush I can use all kinds of different brushes fan brushes are kind of fun to play with i just sort of gotten into them a little bit, but I, I kind of like those. And then uh, I'm going to put this up over the eye like that. And then we'll get it just slightly darker by dipping into our tan color without cleaning our brush. 
and we'll bring it over to this side of the nose. It's hard to control, so I don't use it for very much. You don't have to use a fan brush. You just use a regular brush because you end up messing up your nose and you have to fix it again. Okay, that was just one little fun little experiment right there. Now I'm gonna go back in and kind of tootle around my little dog's eyes a little bit. There. So the main thing I wanted to say with this one, while I'm, I'm uh, working away on it, is you have a light side of the dog and a dark side of the dog, okay? And in the oils, you have the opportunity to play around with it quite a bit. And I'll just clip that in a little bit like this. You can play around with it, you can fix it. You have time to work on it. And the acrylics, you I know some of you guys are getting so frustrated because it dries so fast and then you have to paint over the top of it and then it starts building up and it gets all mucky. Well, that's what happens when you're painting in acrylic. And we'll do an acrylic here in just a little bit of the same image, but I wanted to show you a little bit about how this works. Let's see how our time, now I'm going to take my, my brush and do this, kind of put it out into the background area. Now one thing I forgot to do, everybody, was paint a little bit of background color. I'm going to just add a tiny bit of that light in the muzzle as it comes out like this and a little bit underneath here to shape out that mouth a little bit, like that. And then underneath the nose, there's a little bit of a dark area that looks a little bit like a mustache right here that's dark. So I'm gonna put that dark in there too, yeah. Good. Okay, now uh, in the background, now I'm gonna come back in Let's see what color I want back in the background. Let's do a, a really light, uh, ah, this thing's stuck in my brush here. Okay, so let's, let's think about this maybe with a little tiny bit of uh, lavender into our mix. A lavender and white with a tiny bit of yellow. So let's see. This is a muted lavender. Let's test that out. Yeah, that'll work. And I'm going to use some medium, so I'm going to put a little muted lavender like that. Because lavender is opposite to the color of the dog. And then I'm going to go back into the dark a little bit with our dark brown and just kind of work it back and forth a little bit. Again, you don't have to use this great big brush. You can have a little bit more control if you like. You can see how I can fuzz it out a little bit right as it goes into the dog area, and, and then uh, that works out good. Okay, how about a little bit more of that purple with brown? Maybe more brown. Very classic, classic looking result. So the reason I do this background part like this is then I can work the fur back into the background so they don't have a, a cookie cutter dog. So I'm just putting this in so it's a little bit wet and that way I can fuse the, uh, the dog into the background a little bit without having it look like it's, uh, you know, paper cutout doll. Okay. Well, that's the start of this uh, particular painting. And when we come back, I'll show you how this one finished up. And then we will try this again in acrylic. Won't that be fun? Yeah. So I hope you'll join me for part two of painting a Corgi Chihuahua mix for Christy. All right. See you guys later. And don't forget to uh, find the pet portrait kits on my Etsy site at net, nettykstudio.etsy.com. Love you guys. See you later. Bye-bye.